Okay, welcome to this special edition enrichment webinar from the NASA Night Sky Network. This webinar, we are featuring the new Night Sky Network Outreach Toolkit in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing on the moon. And so on, the, on there, you can see that there's a URL that can direct you to the Night Sky Network website and that has a lot of the resources uh, that are in the toolkit, but also some uh, PDFs of some of the resources that are expendable so that you can get some new resources to replace um, what you use up during your outreach events. For those of you who haven't uh, met us in the past, my name is Brian Cruz. I'm the director of the Teacher Learning Center here at uh, the ASP and also typically the host of these webinars. And so with me, I have Vivian Wright. Hi, I'm Vivian, and I um, help administer the NASA Night Sky Network. And in case this is your first time joining, the Night Sky Network is a group of 450-ish astronomy clubs across the country. Um, and uh, this toolkit that we're about to introduce is one of the benefits of membership of joining the Night Sky Network, so we'll tell you about that. We also have Dave here. Dave, are you on? He's mm -hmm. uh, yep. across the hall. <laughs> All right, and so we'll hear from Dave Prosper a little bit later, but first here's Vivian with an overview of the toolkit. Great. Um, like I said, thanks Brian, the toolkit's a benefit of membership and clubs in the NASA Night Sky Network can report on their events that they've held and earn these materials for free every quarter. Um, there are dozens of other, there's no, and at least a dozen, not dozens, <laughs> other <laughs> toolkits um, ranging from solar system to black holes to extrasolar planets. And so all clubs in good standing should have received your kit already for last month. Um, and if you haven't and you think you should have, let us know. Um, or if you need to log some events, just go ahead and post those online. If you have any questions, you're, feel free to reach out to us anytime. Um, this mini moon toolkit contains a variety of resources and we're going to share a lot of those with you this evening But what I'm going to do first is kind of give you an overview of what you find in the toolkit where to find them um, If you don't have the toolkit and then we're going to get into more detail about how to use each of them and After we demonstrate those you're going to have a chance to ask questions and share ideas and we'll get to hear back from you So let's see um, These are our included resources, right? Um, and I think I'll just leave that for just a second. Um, on the main webpage, the link is at the bottom and it'll be on many of these slides. So you, if you don't have time to write it down, don't worry. But you'll find uh, links to these resources as well as resources from other partners like the NIAS Network. Um, and let me go through these just quickly. Oops. Uh, there we go. Uh, the first one is the tactile moon. These are um, just what it sounds like tactile moon images so that you can use um, with people who have limited seeing um, or also just with people who like to get up and touch things. So we have the full moon and the Tycho crater which are pretty darn neat and they're from a um, book called Getting a Feel for Lunar Craters put out by Survey, and the direct link to that is there. To have Who's Survey? Oh, I wish you hadn't <laughs> asked because I can't remember what the acronym stands for. I know, we use these acronyms and we forget that not <laughs> everyone knows what the acronyms what are. What do you mean? Who's so. Survey? Do you know what it stands for? It's the bunch at uh, NASA who produces a lot of really cool digital and other resources about uh, solar system exploration. There you go. Solar system. It stands for yeah, the Solar System Exploration Research Virtual Institute. <laughs> Thank you so much. I don't know how I didn't remember that. That's why they call it Survey. <laughs> but they have great resources, and this link will get you right there. Um, we have these lunar phase cards, and these are downloadable from the website. You can download and print them very easily. Um, and uh, we'll show you in just a minute how to use some of those. We also have our mythology card stories from around the world about what people see in the moon, along with a worksheet so that you can uh, encourage kids and adults um, who like to draw and tell stories to share their own stories of what they see in the moon. Let's see, we've also got Skywatcher's Guide to the Moon, which is a lunar map showing everything. These are handouts you can just have at any of your events that encourage people to look up and what, um, show them what you can see in the moon. 
Uh, one more because we get it an awful lot from people uh, that come to our star parties. Uh, can you see the flag on the moon? Well, here's I'm going to show you why your backyard telescope will not show the flag on the moon, but it's a cool thing. It's a powers of 10 activity. Dave will show us about in a second. Let's see. Oh, I think so. I think that's it. Oops. There we go. So here are a few links. Um, anyone who wants these, the free downloads, are, they're all freely available. You can download them and print anything you want. Um, that's at bit.ly uh, bit slash NSN moon. Now the tactile moon link that I showed earlier is also a bit.ly link. It's just touch moon. And then um, someone was asking earlier, um, we are offering a limited number of these that we have extra left over that we made extras of because we thought other people would be interested in. We're offering them at cost and um, that's through the Astro Shop. So I just made a short link to that. Um, they come in different sizes so you can order a small one or a big one and we'll show you what's in, you can find out what's in all of those on the Astro Shop, but we'll show you what's in um, the kit as it comes next. So I think that's it and I'm gonna hop out of here so that we can actually show you the materials. Yeah. All right, well, thanks Vivian for that great overview. Now we're gonna go through some of the specific resources. and we're gonna start out with Dave, who's gonna show us the lunar phase cards. Okay, so um, you can download these again at the, uh, the resource website. Uh, I actually really love these cards. Uh, you can also, um, well, you can get physical copies of these in the kits. Uh, you, we also have these available for download on the Night Sky Network website at the aforementioned link. Uh, you can print these out there in a PDF format, so you can, you know, print them and use them. Like we rapidly did some up here, um, or you can also uh, uh, put them on your tablet or laptop. A little bit of red film or whatever you want to use for uh, nighttime activities too, if you're more into that. So anyway, um, so we kind of made these. A common thing for a lot of folks starting out with observing the moon in particular, people think, oh, we want to observe the moon on a full moon. Um, they think it's the best time to observe it. It's fun to look at the full moon, but uh, really, you kind of want to see it during all of its different phases and really peek along the terminator where the contrast is uh, strongest. Uh, in a sense, I guess uh, the terminator of the moon is kind of the equivalent of a golden hour for terrestrial photographers, especially Instagrammers. <laughs> and uh, so while the, moon, the uh, lunar cycle is 29 days long, we did not make 29 cards. Uh, we capped them at uh, the first 11 days. And with each day on these cards, uh, we feature a phase for that day and uh, several cool features for that day to check out. Generally, it's the moon, so a lot of craters, some seas, a few uh, mountain ranges, and rays as well. And uh, on the back for each one, we have a little bit of lunar science. We've got some history here. Um, at the end of day five, we have a color of the moon and some of the, the actual uh, color scheme, or the color swatch that they use to actually check out their photos on the moon and so on. Um, we tried to match up the science with the features as much as possible with these cards. Uh, and while it's not 100% one-to-one for each card, uh, we think that they uh, work pretty well and help give a kind of a brief overview of uh, the, the moon and some of the science behind what you're seeing. And uh, while we don't have space on all these cards to feature every different sort of lunar feature or notable crater or sea, we tried to get a lot of them on here as we could. Um, and uh, we actually also feature uh, challenges um, on the bottom of some of these cards too to kind of, they're sort of like mini activities you can engage your visitors with. Uh, so um, like for example, if, uh, oh, we'll take up too much time to go through right now. Uh, but you can check them out for yourself and uh, uh, on with the next activity. Thanks Dave, that was great. Okay, let me unpin you. All right, uh, so the next thing we're gonna do actually requires a little bit of darkness as many of the activities for the Night Sky Network are good at. Um, we have, these are the tactile versions of the moon. A little tricky to see in this light, but um, they are, uh, there's a full moon version like this, and then there is a version of the Tycho Crater that also shows 
the side relief of what it looks like and what's underneath. There's a scale on the top of each of them. Uh, Tycho Crater, one centimeter that you can feel right here um, is eight kilometers or five miles-ish. And there's Braille on the top. So people who know how to read Braille can uh, read it uh, on here as well. So I wanna show you one thing that we often do. Oh, one more thing I wanna feature. <laughs> this QR code here, um, that's the one that will get you directly to the um, link on the survey website that we showed you before that also has an entire um, explanation and a, an audio explanation of how what they're feeling on the moon. So if someone actually has is limited in sight, they can um, feel their way around the moon and it talks about all the different pieces and what they're feeling and some of the craters and it kind of um, gives a tour uh, with your fingers which is very cool. Um, and, oh, I wanted to say, so we use this one in an activity called Spotting Craters, and there's a link to that on the website where, um, uh, that we showed you in the beginning. And this is kind of cool. Let me see if you can turn that. Does this one work with that light? Let's try this. So the Spotting Craters activity has to do with um, also when the best time to view the moon is. Let me see how I got this before. Yeah. Oh, I think I had to turn this off. Let's see. There we go. Now we can get some. Uh, we can. You can use a flashlight, or you can uh, use a single light over there. And thanks, Dave. Just put the spotting craters activity in the chat there. Um, uh, but you can see how much more detail you can see when you have shadows on the moon, as opposed to when the moon is shining directly on a spot. Now this is interesting. This is not where the Apollo 11 astronauts landed. However, um, the Apollo 11 astronauts did land right at sunset on the moon. So they landed, um, they had to schedule the flight when the sun was only five to 14 degrees above the horizon because they really needed those shadows to show them um, what, you know, where things were on the moon as they were landing, but also to kind of give scale to things because it was all bright and there were no shadows. It would be very hard to see on the moon. Um, the shadows give us a lot of information and, and make, as you all know, viewing the moon an awful lot of fun. So one other thing on the website link, you can also get links to, if you have access to a 3D printer, I love these. Um, we we're playing around. We tried to get some of these in the toolkit, but we didn't have enough to send you all one. So um, these are 3D printed versions of the lunar landscape. I got a little turned around here. This one does have Apollo 11 on there somewhere. <laughs> I don't think I marked it, but this is really fun for your outreach activities. And if you have access to a 3D printer or if your local library has access to a 3D printer, um, you can print them pretty inexpensively. They don't even have to be this thick. Um, you can make a set that's very sturdy, and I use this one all the time for outreach, and kids love to come up and touch the moon. It's a, a pretty nice way to go. So there's that. Um, and while we have the lights dim, I want to show you one more uh, resource that's in here, and I think we have to switch to this yep. camera now. Switch cameras. Let's try that. All right, now you can see the workspace. Woo! All right, so many of you guys know this activity. This is, um, it was used extensively for um, the eclipse that happened in 2017. This is um, uh, just a, it's called the yardstick eclipse. And many of you received this. It's also in this toolkit. Um, and it is a scale model of the earth at one inch and the moon down here at a quarter inch. And we put it on a yardstick because you can fit 30 earths in between the earth and moon no matter what scale you're doing, but if this uh, Earth is an inch, that means you can fit between the Earth and Moon 30 inches. Okay, so many of you are already familiar with this activity or some variation of it. Here's another way to do that. So we did a little bit of calculation, and um, I looked on here, and there are not many eclipses coming up in the next couple of years. The next lunar eclipse isn't until March, May of 2021. So we have a little bit of time before that happens. But in the meantime, you can use an activity like this. Um, you can use it, right, I showed you how to do, let's see, I guess we didn't do the eclipse yet. So if you see, you can make an eclipse here pretty darn easily. You can also make, this is a lunar eclipse where the sun um, 
is blocked by the Earth. And um, you can make a solar eclipse, of course, by turning it around. One other thing you can do with it is if you, let's see if you can see it here. I, don't, I guess we don't actually on. need a light. Yeah, let's okay. Get the lights on. Right. All right. So one thing you can do, and I'm going to switch back to the other video for that. I think that's easier to see. Thanks, Brian. All right. So now can you see the whole thing? Oh. <laughs> <I'm knocking out. laughs> All right. Um, one thing you can do is um, what we found that comes up pretty often the super moon versus the mini moon, and people seem to be really excited about it, and it causes more interest in the moon, and that's pretty exciting. Um, one way you can talk about that so, 30 Earth diameters is the average distance to the moon. But if you want to take this and use it to demonstrate how close the moon is during a super moon versus a mini moon, um, it might get a little bit of wah, wah, disappointment from your audience because it's only about two inches closer for a supermoon and about two inches further away than average on a mini moon. So really the distance is not changing that much, but it does change appreciably. You can tell that there is a difference, but it's not as though the moon is going to be right next to the earth during a supermoon. We don't want to create that misconception. So this gives you a way to talk about that. So that's one we, other way we use that one. Um, and I think Brian's going to tell us about um, the mythology. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So one of the other ones that we're really excited about, and this is one that was uh, developed uh, that we've been using, and it's a variation on one that we've been using for close to 20 years around here. Um, and so some of you may have seen this before. And so one of the things, we've, you've got actually two versions of this. In the kits, you've got a version that you can use one of these rings for. So we have a nice full moon here. And if you open it up, then the first page here are moon stories from around the world. And then it goes through and it has a variety of stories. And so here we have a picture kind of illustrating one of these stories. And then you can flip it over and it turns out that this is a story called Fox in the Moon. That's a story that was told um, traditionally in Peru. And then here's another story where we've got a nice uh, toad here in the middle and that this is the toad in the moon, which is a story from China and so on. We've got a variety of different stories that we have here. And so you can have this out at one of your event. They're nice and, and solid that you can be able to use. Now, if you happen to use the, these up or if you want to have additional copies, there is a, another version of this that you can download as a PDF and print these to your heart's content, which uh, is basically on a piece of paper like, like this. And so Moon Stories from Around the World that has the explanations. And then you have these other pages, which you've got the picture, the, the illustration, and then the story on the back. Well, this isn't the really exciting part. I mean, it's exciting to be able to have all these stories, but the really cool part is that you can then print out one of these. And so we supplied one of these for you on some nice cardstock so it doesn't get um, munched up too much, but you can print out these. This oh, uh, template this is... That. that I can see. This template is uh, also on, uh, on the website. And so what you can do is you can give this to the visitors. They can look at the stories um, on the cards, and then they can look at the moon, see what sort of figure that they might see on the moon, looking at the different uh, patterns of the Maria and the highlands. And then they can draw the figure there on the moon, and then they can tell the story with the character down here. And we actually have a, a story here. And so, um, oh yeah, where is that story? I have that story. So here. we it's have a so story. Cute. We were just doing a. Um, well, we might just have to tell them the story. I don't know that I have it right here with me, but we had a we did an event at the Cal Academy last week, uh, actually for Astronomy Day, and um, and one of the stories. Oh, you've got it here. Here we found it. Okay, can and, you see and, it? And so here's oh, yeah. a, so here's it? a story that was uh, yeah. was was told. We don't have. Uh, um, the image here, but here's the story that um, one of the children that came by told. It's about nine, I think. Yeah, about nine. And so the characters are a painter and a farmer. Once upon a time, a painter was painting a farmer's fence. Then the farmer said, let's have a seesaw paddle battle. So the painter did. When they did, the painter accidentally brought the paint with him. The farmer made the painter go too high into space 
and the painter spilled his paint on the moon. So I thought that that was incredibly creative. And this is the sort of thing that really can help um, some of the learners of any age who come to your uh, events um, get excited about, about, because it really builds in uh, their stories that they can tell about the moon. And every culture has had stories about the moon. And a lot of us have stories about why the moon is important to us. And then we can have this opportunity to create these. And we've, we've discovered that it's not just little kids um, who enjoy this. Adults enjoy coming up with their own stories. Uh, even adults uh, really feel like they want that creative outlet to be able to build some relevance to uh, the move. And that really is uh, what we're all about here, is to helping create that spark, create that relevance for people. And this is a, a way to really personalize the experience. I think what I like a lot about that is often you'll get the parents saying, wait, I haven't told you the story about the moon that my mom told me. And then you'll get the parents telling the kids their moon stories from wherever they're from and whatever traditions they've got. So it's really nice. It's also to engage kind of multi-generational in that way. A nice one. One of the other really cool things that goes along with the storytelling is that we have a link on the website. Um, and... Dave Prosper is going to bring that up and play one of the stories uh, from one of our partners at the Lunar and Planetary Institute. They have a whole uh, range of um, moon stories that are available that you can play as audio files. So here's Dave. All right, and here we go. Oh, I should say this is the uh, drummer on the moon story from uh, the Ivory Coast. Children, look. Look up at the moon. See the man sitting there on the moon. He is the drummer man. Listen, children. I will tell you about the drummer man on the moon. He got there before your father's father and your mother's mother, before their fathers and mothers. The drummer man sits there on the moon and plays his drum. His drum is a talking drum. He plays his talking drum for the spirits of our ancestors. Our ancestors are there on the moon. They are waiting for us. We cannot see our ancestors. We see only the drummer man. All night he plays and sings and chants and tells stories to our ancestors. Oh children, when the moon is full, remember to look for the drummer man. You will see him sitting there playing his drum. And if you listen, maybe you will hear him as you fall asleep. Shh. Tonight when you fall asleep, you can dream of the drummer man. Shh. Now you can dream the story. Shh. See the drummer man. Can you hear the drummer man? The story is ended. All right. Well, thanks, Dave. That's great. I love that one. So let's go ahead and stay with Dave for a minute, and he's going to share with you one of uh, one of the other activities from the kit. Boy, I just want to mention um, Cheryl Webb in the uh, chat just mentioned that she works at the uh, Lunar and Planetary Science Institute. Lunar and Planetary Institute, and they're going to have one of the stories playing during their library open house on July 20th. So if you're near there, yeah. check it out. If you're That's not awesome. near there, think about how you might incorporate that. I mean, you can play them from anywhere on your phone or something at an event. It really adds this um, kind of levity and um, mystique to the moon when you're looking up at it. It's kind of nice. Okay. And there's the link there to some of the stories as well. And uh, Speaking of, this isn't really a story, but um, definitely hear from folks. Um, this is the flag on the moon activity. Um, it's just a nice little sheet or a handout you can give to folks who just use it to guide them through some of uh, like a kind of why we can't actually see the flag on the moon from Earth. Um, you've almost certainly been asked if you can see the flag in the moon with your telescope or the Apollo landing sites in general. Uh, 
we all know that we're pretty limited in how closely we can zoom into the moon, but uh, a lot of folks, when they come up, they don't understand the limits of uh, our telescopes. And so um, this handy sheet can hopefully help with that. Uh, on this, we kind of do just a quick run through of the different levels of, uh, I guess, levels of observation that we can get to on the moon or, or how much we can zoom in. Um, the, it goes through the kind of the largest thing we can see it sort of uh, with each instrument from our eyes, binoculars, and telescope, and so on. Uh, the smallest features that we can see for each are still pretty large. I mean, especially obviously with your eyes, it's usually maybe a crater, but usually it's the seas. And um, telescopes and onwards, you get smaller and smaller craters and rills and stuff, but you still can't really see, say, a spacecraft on there. And a lot of people say, well, can't the Hubble turn that on the moon and actually see uh, the Apollo site? And it turns out that the Hubble actually has a pretty large size limit as well versus uh, what most people think it can uh, readily see. And the Hubble has actually made a very few observations on the moon, but it's uh, not really designed for that. And um, I think I heard uh, one of our guests say something once on one of our previous webinars that the Hubble's made for looking deeper, not closer, if that makes any sense. Kind of. um, but um, the only telescopes I can really see the flag on the moon are the ones that are actually orbiting the moon. Uh, like in particular, uh, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which on this sheet you can just see, sort of barely make out the little, uh, a few pixels of that, uh, where the flag of the Apollo uh, lander are. Um, but for some folks, maybe it makes more sense to sort of flip the problem and say, well, if you were standing on the moon, could you, what's the largest feature that you could actually see on Earth if you were on the moon? And then it's like, oh, yeah, it would be pretty hard to have a telescope there and see your house or even your state versus even something as small as like your car or even a relatively small flag. Um, but yeah, um, so that's kind of it. It's a fun little sheet, a quick little prop. Uh, Quick little uh, summary of uh, some of that, and uh, back to you. I know when we were uh, researching that, um, some of the imagery for that, and I actually discovered that I, somewhere in the middle of the country, there's a really huge flag outside an insurance company. I don't remember exactly where. And you can't even see it uh, until you zoom in with uh, Google Earth View. Um, until you zoom in quite a ways, you know, you, even with that from uh, low Earth orbit, it's really hard to, to find. And, and that's a huge flag, way bigger than the ones that are on the moon. So it's, uh, yeah. it's a pretty good challenge. Yeah. So Vivian wants to show us uh, one of the resources that we also developed that's on the website is uh, a nice little short PowerPoint. And Vivian just wants to show you just a few of the sample um, slides from that. Yeah, this is one of the things that we get um, uh, asks for uh, quite a bit. Let's see if I can show that. Let should do it. These are some of those links from before. I just put them in the chat as well. Um, so we have a very simple PowerPoint. It's called To the Moon, Small Steps to Giant Leaps. And it just goes over the history of the U.S putting humans on the moon. And it's a, you don't have to know anything about it. Um, I tried to make it as easy as possible for a complete novice to be able to present. There's notes in there. Um, there's also links to videos that you, this is simple, it doesn't have any videos or animations or anything like that, but there are links to resources like that if you want to include them. Um, but this has just got 15 slides and it gives an overview. I just grabbed a couple of them here, beginning with uh, the Soviets putting a uh, man in space and then uh, President Kennedy issuing this challenge to the nation. And then it goes through how methodically we went through the steps and all the different pieces that we needed to put in place before we could actually um, get to the moon. So uh, step two was uh, actually the three different types of human space flight that we used. and. Um, and it details all of those, gives a little bit of interesting information about those, um, and it continues on into robotic exploration in the 90s and even currently to this day like LR, um, Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter that um, Dave was talking about that can actually see these, um, mostly the shadows of things on the moon. Yeah. yeah. I don't think your uh, PowerPoint's uh, showing and you're not full screen. Oh no. Either. Oh, that's no good. Okay, hold on one second. 
Open those to the front. Oh, well, that's no good. Two shakes. Let me try that one more time. Okay. Thank you guys for letting us know. Okay. Did you see? What do you see? Um, Not I'm, much. Uh, it's just white, uh, blank right now. How about now? No. <laughs> it was working earlier. Yeah, oh, it totally was. Okay. Let me try this again one more time. Thanks for letting me know, you guys. Two shakes. All right. Once more with feeling. Pretty much. Oh, all right. Let's try this. Uh, That's better. Better? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Woohoo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got this now. Uh, I'll go over it even more quickly then. I kind of reviewed what we were talking about. Uh, but very simple, uh, mostly pictures on the slides with a little bit of some quotes or some words. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Um, yeah, so talking about the steps of human space flight. Um, and then on to our robotic exploration. Each of these has notes about what they found and what years they were in case you have questions about it. People follow up with questions. There should be plenty of information in the more information piece. Um, and it even moves on to the next step. So exploring the moon as a launching place for getting to Mars and out into the solar system. So um, uh, it's, like I said, 15 slides and pretty darn simple. Let me just see. Oh, yeah. Okay, the next piece. Let me get this out of the way. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's a... Uh, uh, an overview of everything that's in the toolkit. And now we want to hear from all of you on how you have either already used the toolkit resources, how you're planning to use them, and or any other events that you're planning to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing. If you have a question about holding events or something you've wanted to try, this is the group to ask. Between everyone on this call, there's a wealth of creativity and knowledge, and we encourage all of you to ask questions and to, to share. So we're going to open it up to uh, hear from all of you. I wanted to show one thing on here. This was a really cool, this was for International Observe the Moon Night, which I didn't talk about. It, you should have gotten a save the date card in your um, kit, but it's uh, October 5th this year. And this is from last year's International Observe the Moon Night in Oklahoma City. Um, they had a walking on the moon where they projected the moon. I mean, people come up, you guys have come up with the best ideas. Um, mm -hmm. Love to hear what you guys are thinking about. I just thought I'd share that one because it always inspires me. Vivian, is the PowerPoint up on the website? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the PowerPoint is. Okay. Yep. Okay, great. So it's in the uh, um, the toolkit outreach resource um, on the Night Sky Network uh, website. Great, and I will the put those links there. in one more time just so you have them all. All the resources are on the bit.ly slash NSN Moon. Um, you can pretty much find everything you need right there. They're all um, linked from there. All right. Well, let's see if we got this. So Bobette notes that uh, they're going to use the toolkit next week with uh, library reading hours in three different cities. We would love it if you would uh, unmute yourself and tell us a little bit more about where and, and how you're doing that. Are you able to do that, Babette? Babette, sorry. Um, okay, I'll unmute you and you'll have to say yes if you want to. <laughs> Hi, Vivian, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Oh, oh great. Uh, I have two presentations for the moon coming up on the 19th and the 20th. Uh, if, I, if I were to get a kit, how could I get a kit and would I get it in time? Ah, uh, yes. So the 19th, what day are we on? Yes, absolutely. If you get it in time, no problem. Um, and uh, are you, uh, tell me, are you a solar system ambassador? Is that right? I'm also, I'm also with the Aldrich Astronomical Society. Oh, so somebody, I believe, got that. I'll have to check. We'll have to see who at the Aldrich Astronomical Society got that. If you didn't get that already um, with your club, uh, send us an email and we'll let you know how to do that. Basically, you just need to tell us about two events you've held in the past, basically since the beginning of the year would be fine. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us two events you've held uh, on the website. There's a way to log those in and um, and then you'll automatically get it. But if you send us an email, we'll get it out faster. <laughs> we can do that. The Aldridge definitely got the uh, kit. Oh, so I'm just going to see who. Uh, the Probably contact. went to Jim Zembrowski, the president. There you so go. That's right. He's the one to check with. 
That's good. Uh, is it possible to still get one? Uh, yeah, so you can also order additional ones at no, at, uh, not at no cost, but at cost. Um, the kits at cost uh, are in a link. I'll just put it up again, two shakes. Oh, I think I've already copied it, let's see. I'll just, uh, the kits at cost are on the bottom link right there that I put up. Yeah. And you can order uh, different pieces of it as you want. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thanks Vivian. Yeah, totally. Okay, we've got some other really great comments in uh, the chat. I'd love to hear from uh, some of the some of you and uh, out loud, actually. <laughs> um, Deanna, Deanna Marshall, we hosted an angles challenge last weekend. Um, we had middle school and high school teams. We had a total of five teams um, and about 50 people overall come and they did really, really well. Um, I am going to be starting a jun an FLL junior team going into the new year. I work with FRC pretty extensively already, but um, I kind of want to work with the little ones and get that in in started. So I'm hoping that this will keep their interest throughout the summer. There's a really neat activity, um, I'll put the link up, called um, Moonbear Shadow for really young ones. I don't know if you've had a chance to play with that, but it's just talking about exploring their shadows and it's kind of some astronomy ideas that are just for the very youngest, three to five years old. A lot of libraries are using that one. Um, I'll just find that one and get back to you. I can find that if you want to. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, John, all uh, some people are asking for the links. All of those are all of the things that you can print yourself are all on that top link. So bit.ly slash NSN Moon. Um, and and so this year's this summer's reading adventure um, for libraries is a universe of learning, and it's a lot about the moon. So I know a lot of libraries are requesting events from solar system ambassadors, from amateur astronomy clubs. Um, and uh, and so I know a lot of you are very, very busy this summer with the moon and the universe of stories. Um, Annette, do you want to tell us about your 15 presentations in June and July? When do you sleep, is my one question. <laughs> you can unmute yourself if you'd like. Can you uh, hear me now? Yes, gotcha. Okay, yes, I am doing, um, well, I did one on the, um, the moon uh, at the local library already, but I have 15 more to do. I'm doing one calling um, mostly on the history of the moon, but as I said, I grew up in Huntsville, so I remember as a child, a lot of people don't realize they tested those rocket motors underground to begin with, so we would be playing as children or whatever, and it was like a mini earthquake. The ground would shake, our toys would move, dishes would fall off, and we just learned to live with the fact that, you know, they were testing a rocket and um, I tell about my father-in-law people don't realize when NASA came to Huntsville in 53 they recruited men who had um, that had degrees but it also they wanted electronic backgrounds and so my father-in-law had been in the Navy and got it and so there's a lot of things that I share that I just know from having lived in the 50s in Huntsville I'm now in North Carolina as an SSA but uh, I have a PowerPoint that goes from the Mercury to the Gemini, the Apollo, that my husband and I have put together because he worked on the shuttles. And um, so we do extensive, I do a lot of hands-on. I'm a hands-on science teacher. And uh, I would love to get the kit because I'm always looking for new things to uh, add to my presentations. Um, I speak regularly at a few of the museums here in um, our area. I do mostly rural areas, even though it says Winston. but. Um, yeah, I love what I do. Where, what's your area again? I am in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Okay, fantastic. I know that at least three clubs in North Carolina already have this kit. Um, yeah, so if you want to partner with clubs who can help, or there's so many of these resources you can just print out, and then you don't, you know, it's super easy to use them in that way. Yeah. Great, I'll look them up, thanks. Yeah. Anybody else? My Annette goodness. has raised her hand. Uh, that was, I think, just Annette who was oh, talking that just with. Annette? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And Chris was saying he used, Chris, um, Katie, I think you were saying you used the um, moon story at a recent event. 
you mentioned that earlier. I thought that was great that they really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorites because you get so much creativity from the kids and adults. Mary, <laughs> Mary's doing something. It looks like the uh, angles uh, challenges are uh, all over the place. Ooh. Oh. Cool. You want to read it? Yeah, uh, this is from Mary and Laura. Mary, if you'd like to um, speak up, you're welcome to uh, unmute yourself and tell us about it. It sounds amazing. Um, we do a lot of work on the Navajo and Hopi reservations, classroom lessons and star parties, traveling to Winslow Public Library on Thursday. <laughs> That's great. Right next to um, mm -hmm. the area. Not that far. I think not far. Yeah, great. Yes. Um, you can email us anytime at nightskyinfo at astrosociety.org if you have questions. Um, uh, we have some of these resources. Yeah, you're welcome to um, hit us up if you have any questions. We can at least direct you to the people who might uh, be able to help you with something if we are not able to. Yeah. So nightskyinfo at astrosociety.org. And Dave just put it in the chat too. Yeah. So tell us about everything you're doing. This is, or, or, or questions you have, like if you want to hold an event and you're not sure, or you want to get in touch with an astronomy club. If you are not a, um, an astronomer, an amateur astronomer, or you're not part of a club and you are in a library and you have not reached out to your local club, they're amazing. Um, we have them all over the country and um, clubs often partner with libraries and museums and you know, science centers and such to, um, events. So. We've had a lot of people mention that they're working with libraries and not just a single one. And it sounds like most <laughs> of them are working with multiple libraries. Right. And I think that's great. Oh, it's so good to see everybody. I can see them on your computer. Hi. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Skip. I know you're doing a million things. <laughs> you could uh, go to uh, gallery view on yours. Hello, everyone. Who's that? Hello, this is Sherelle Webb. Hi, Hi Sherelle. Hello. <laughs> I just wanted to introduce myself. I am the new education specialist for the Lunar and Planetarium Institute in Houston. Awesome. Yay. And I just came back from a wonderful NASA training or NASA workshop that was led and partnered with Starnet. Um, it was the NAMO workshop in Columbus, Ohio. And there were about 25 phenomenal librarians there from the area. And because I'm new to this position, um, I did not have the uh, perspective of how much the library is a cornerstone in the community. And so being a part of the workshop, it enlightened me in great measure. And so um, I was able to uh, help and to facilitate a number of wonderful workshops uh, using the StarNet resources and to contribute to the summer program, Universal Stories, um, different things that were on the Lunar and Planetary Institute website as well as StarNet. They collaborated and the teachers walked away with a lot of um, positive ideas and easily implementation of activities that they can use this summer. That is so awesome. Welcome to the family. Yes. <laughs> so <nice> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do before? I'm a classroom teacher, eighth grade science for seven years. Awesome. That's great. We're so yeah. glad to have you. The astronomy education community is pretty small and <clears throat> globally it's not that big. So it's nice to see a new face. <laughs> well, you know, one of our favorite people of all time is Christine Shupla, who yes! I'm probably working with. So. Yes, that's, <laughs> so she is, she is my, she's my boss. Awesome. <laughs> and I was there with her. Oh, you're in good hands. You, you've got a great boss. <laughs> yeah, so I would, I would tell her that you all say hello and that, uh, yeah, and that she was missed. Yeah. yeah. Welcome. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what do we got? We've got observe, um, the, moon night. observe the moon night. Yay. Oh, um, so I think Babette cannot um, unmute because um, she's on the phone. Yeah, she but, said that uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. But um, one of the inside activities they did for Observe the Moon Night was to draw the images people see on parchment paper to flip up and down on the moon image. And children are excited to see the shapes for themselves. That's pretty cool. I love that. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of great um, STEAM activities. So STEM being science, technology, math, and engineering. <laughs> Science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, we incorporate art into that and make it a STEAM event like their Create Your Own Moon Story. So so it sounds like she's just taking some tracing paper or vellum and then using this and putting it over that. I think that's a wonderful idea. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Absolutely. You can also, I tried on um, the moon. Oops, where did it go? Oh, can you hear me that? You can do rubbings. This was kind of a cool one. If you um, get thin paper and a pencil, you can do rubbings on your 3D printed things and you'll get um, craters if you're kind of careful. It's not super simple. Um, like for example, this one's four times um, exaggerated in depth, I guess. Um, so, but uh, you can definitely make really cool rubbings. And that's something that people have been getting into um, I don't know if any of you have ever tried doing rubbings on gravestones or pothole pot um, covers, but that's something I just went to it. That's an activity. Leslie has a really great um, question here about access to the model files, and then Tom put a link up there too. Um, one of the really cool things is that uh, Moon Trek, you can actually, if you get on there, and we um, unfortunately, Brian Day wasn't able to join us in, back in April. Um, and we're, we're hoping to bring Brian in for a postponed webinar next month uh, in July. And he'll go through and, and one of the, the, and he'll go through and really demonstrate the, the moon trek. Um, but if you can find that, um, one of the tools that you can use there is you can generate your own files of anything you want on the moon. And you can create a file that you can then download to a 3D printer and make your own uh, model of just about anything on the moon that, that you want. It doesn't have to be uh, limited to these, uh, these uh, you know, the files that, that NASA has uh, kind of uh, um, defined. Yeah, that's what we did with this. We wanted to get two um, landing spots. So we have 11 and 17, I think. I think it's 11 and 17. I think it's 11. So we got two of them on here. So. Of course, I didn't mark it for this version, but um, I think it's marked on the other one that's still in your office. Really so. Like uh, so you can print any size, any area that you want. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I can show it real quick if you want. Oh yeah, yeah. you've got it. Show you it to us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Second. It takes a few minutes to download, so I can't show you that part. But yeah. there we go. It at least um, you can see how you start. You go to, uh, let's just start from the beginning. You go to uh, crack.nasa.gov. Like second, load up. What are the, there's a lot of tracks. We're looking for the moon. Mm -hmm. uh, in theory, it loads without doing a rendering error. <laughs> One second. Um, while you're getting that set up, Marie said she's an archaeologist and a solar system ambassador and is excited to use the moon stories from around the world. That's great. I'm thrilled that you're excited. <laughs> you can zoom yeah. in and out on the moon here. Just pick this crater here. Looks pretty cool. <laughs> Snowman. Um, so the tool for generating the files is in the right hand corner of this little uh, uh, wrench. Then you click a 3D print file. So you Draw a rectangle and uh, click submit. It's pretty easy. You go like, so you want to grab this little piece of terrain. You can also, um, you can adjust the resolution and a lot of folks um, kind of prefer exaggerating the height a little bit. So if you want to give it a boost as far as contrast is concerned, you can do that. If you want to stay super accurate, keep it to one. Let's do four. Um, and then it, generates that little square as a 3D file, which you can then send to your printer. You get a little download prompt when it's all done. Um, but yeah, that, that's all there is to it. Yeah. To share there. My mom could do it. <laughs> <laughs> as my grandma would say, though, she, she's like, she actually knows how to use the computer better than 
uh, my mom. So she's, <laughs> uh, like, why do people always say that? <laughs> oh, great. Well, we're coming up at the end of the hour. So if there's anything, any other burning questions you have or thoughts you want to include? Anybody want to say anything? We'll leave some space. I do have one quick question. Yes. Okay. Um, is there a website that we can go to that has like a like a, a bunch of different activities that we can do? I'm looking more like I, I'm the director of an observatory here in Holton, Kansas, and uh, we do a lot of uh, educational programs. So I'm just trying to. Uh, what I want to do is I want to use that whole day on July 20th. Uh, for kids and parents to come out and do different things, you know, related to uh, the moon. And we, we're also going to use, um, they're going to bring their cell phones out and take pictures of our 24 inch scope and stuff. So we're going to have all sorts of fun stuff, but I want to get more activities geared toward the, um, oh, grade school kids, middle school. And Absolutely. so parents can participate as well. Um, so we have, um, right on the link that we sent, it takes you to the Night Sky Network website, and it's one of our outreach resources. You can search on the right-hand side at, by topic. So if you just put in moon, it would give you a list of probably a dozen or so activities, and they tell you what age is good for and whether it needs to be nighttime or daytime inside or outside, that kind of thing. So you can narrow it down by what you're looking for. Um, and uh, and it's, it's simple to use. Yeah, thanks, Skip. He was like, it's called the Night Sky Network. I oh, we got a... Oh, a couple of other folks also posted some yeah. extra activity resources too. Uh, right, and LPI, so um, we sent you to the, uh, there, we have a link from there on that website that we, uh, on the Night Sky Network website that we offered. And the LPI that has all those stories, the audio files, they have tons of great resources too. Um, so you can go there. Yeah, you know, there's yeah. a reason they're called the Lunar and Planetary yeah. Institute. So. They have a lot of moon <laughs> resources for sure. Yeah. Um, and stick around, we have a giveaway happening next. So it looks like we're uh, about at the end here. So um, maybe take one more comment from someone if we've got uh, anything else and then we'll wrap it up for the evening. Thanks to all of you who came. Yeah. All right, so let me... Uh, Get prepared here. So you can find this webinar along with many others on the Night Sky Network website in the Outreach Resources section. Each webinar's page also features additional resources and activities. We will post tonight's presentation on the Night Sky Network YouTube channel as well as uh, the Night Sky Network uh, website in the next few days. Thank you for joining this evening, but don't go anywhere. Coming up is our drawing. All right.